Here we are today in Victorville, California, and our, we're delighted to have our guest as Dr. Siva Arunasalam, who is the director, founder of the High Desert Heart Institute in Victorville, California. And Dr. Siva, we're so delighted to meet with you today. Would you just share with our audience your credentials as a cardiologist and your background and educational um, pedigree? Um, I came to this country in uh, 1980, no, 77 actually. I went to undergraduate in the University of Nebraska. And then I did my MD, PhD, started in Johns Hopkins, and then I transferred to Emory University in Atlanta. Uh, where I did my MD, PhD program, and then I did my residency training and my fellowship at UCLA and Cedar Sinai Medical Center. Cedar Sinai, that's obviously extremely distinguished. Yes, it is. And based upon that, so you're a board certified cardiologist as well as internist, is that accurate? That's correct. I have board certification in internal medicine, cardiology, and interventional cardiology as well. What led you or motivated you to start your own clinic or institute primarily dealing with? cardiovascular care of the kind of quality and substance we've seen at the High Desert Institute? Uh, in 1995, when I was finishing up my fellowship at Cedars, uh, one of the local hospitals here was looking for an interventional cardiologist. Uh, so they came and invited me to set up a practice here, and I looked at the surrounding areas. There was a tremendous shortage for qualified cardiologists in the area, and that's how it began. So we started off as a single two-room office uh, right across the street from the hospital. And then within the last 10 years, we have grown to five cardiologists and a 20,000 square foot facility. And what we have found is the chronicity of illness is getting worse. Uh, we are seeing less and less people with heart attacks, but we are seeing more and more people with chronic illness of congestive heart failure patients who are having continuous symptoms of chest pain because we are saving those patients who used to have a heart attack. We're able to intervene and save them. But now we are ending up with problems where the heart muscle is weakened because of the damage that has been done. Twenty years ago, those patients would not have lived. But with modern medication, we are able to keep them alive. And now we are reaching the next stage. The stage is we've already maximized the medical management. So what do we do next for our patients? Patients who are in their 80s, their brain is still functioning, they, are, they, are, they want to be active, but they are limited by their uh, cardiac condition or their medical condition. And so we were looking for alternatives. In 1999, when I was sitting for my interventional boards, at that time I was reading a, a bunch of articles, and I came across articles on allogeny. And I said, wait a minute, this is a drug that converts into nitric oxide, and that is the drug that we give a sublingual nitroglycerin that also converts into nitric oxide. What a novel idea, where you do not have so-called tachyphylaxis or tolerance to the drug, but now we can give this nutritional supplement in very high quantities and, and high uh, 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 frequency that will mimic nitroglycerin without all the side effects. And since 1999, we've been using allogeny in our practice. It seems from my experience in the last couple of years that many cardiologists have not kept up with this kind of research. What, what is your response to why there seems to be a lack of, of cutting edge information on the arginine therapy that's available uh, among that, that of your profession? How many drug reps do you think comes to our office selling allogeny? Nobody does because it is a generic product. So all we hear from our literature is lowering cholesterol, use nitroglycerin. That's what we've been sold. And as a medical profession, to be convinced and to say, all right, you know, nutri uh, nutritional supplements can also play a role, sometimes we feel it is demeaning to us. But, but at the same token, look at how many years it took for us cardiologists and internists and family practitioners to be convinced that cholesterol lowering is good for you. It took 25 years because it took that long for us to be convinced, uh, most of us. Even now there is reluctance in how aggressive we need to be. So it's not unexpected, it is not unusual when a product like allogenine, which nobody promotes, it is there in the literature, uh, but nobody is taking the step unless there is money to be made nobody's going to promote it. And now there is people taking the first step. 
the promoting a nutritional supplement that is going to be beneficial. Now, I understand that your specialty or one of the things that you have contributed greatly to the field of medicine is in the uh, specialization in certain types of stents. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, we, we do a lot of angioplasty. Uh, last year alone, we did about 450 angioplasties in our practice. Uh, we do drug-eluting stents. We do bare metal stents. What are drug-eluting stents? Stents that we put in to open up the arteries have medication that prevent the arteries from collapsing. Uh, we don't mean by physical collapsing. We mean by whenever we injure something, scar tissue forms, and that is the same thing within the artery itself. When we go open it up with a balloon, uh, scar tissue. It is a scarring. It's an injury that we are creating and the body reacts to that injury by forming smooth muscle cells. It starts to proliferate. The newer stents have drugs in them that prevent that proliferation from taking place. When away. you started uh, putting the patients on your study with the ProArginine Plus, what kinds of results did you anticipate and what ended up happening after the 90 and 180 days that that gave you s such an astonishing report? We actually expected everything to happen. Uh, that's the, one of the reasons why we did not have a draw dose curve. That means, you know, we, uh, in 1999 when I started using all arginine, I was just using it whatever I pleased, the dosing we wanted to give. We did not give high enough doses. I knew what all arginine will do. We knew it will lower the blood pressure. We knew what lower blood pressure means to our kidney function, to our heart function. So we knew what the product in high enough concentration can achieve. But some of the stuff that we noticed was remarkable. And in short time, not the time that we expected. Say, for example, if I were to give a patient uh, medication for high blood pressure, we would lower the blood pressure, but the results of lowering the blood pressure would take years to see. But this product, on the other hand, we saw lowering the blood pressure through this medication, other side effects, beneficial side effects that were immediate. Within uh, a month, you started seeing tremendous benefit, which was unexpected. Did you find that one of the things we hear often is that people should be concerned